Hello, Zach Murphy here, and I'm going to share with you a word that the Lord put on my heart. I already have this written up on my blog, so if you want a printed version of it, you can do that. I'm kind of going to read what I wrote, but, you know, I might just add to it as I feel led by the Lord as I do this video. And this is really targeted at what's going on right now with this whole COVID situation and everything, especially in terms of the church. And some of this even applies to the outside of the church too. And before I get into this, let me just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word over social media, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that this edifies the people or encourages them, Lord, and encourages them to step out in biblical boldness and take a stand, Lord. Because this is a time for the body of Christ to stand together, Lord. And I thank you for us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we're definitely living in very interesting times right now. Very unusual times. Uh, never in my life did I expect to see something like this, at least not this soon. But it should not surprise us what's going on. And, you know, a lot of people are very focused on this pandemic. A lot of people, Christians and non-Christians and... People are focused on all the recommendations that the government and CDC and whoever else is coming out with regarding masks, social distancing, quarantine, all that um, stuff. And the pandemic we should be concerned about is not the pandemic of COVID. Um, I myself, I'm not losing any bit of sleep over that. And... One of the things I want to point out is there's actually two pandemics going on. And, you know, they're kind of things that have always been here, if you will. But the first pandemic is people are giving themselves into fear, a spirit of fear. And people are afraid to simply just go about their regular routines. And some people just get really uncomfortable when you don't have a mask on. Very uncomfortable people get, and people get worried just over when your throat starts scratching, and you just have a little cough, and people have spent so much time looking into this virus, looking up the symptoms of this virus and everything, and am I saying that there's anything wrong, excuse me, of being an informed person? Absolutely not. And is there anything wrong with practicing good hygiene? No, you should practice hygiene. Wash your hands. Um... Me personally, I don't see a benefit to mask. I'm just throwing that out there. Everybody's entitled to their own view on that. I do not think mask benefits at all. But nonetheless, people have given themselves into a spirit of fear. People are so fearful of this virus. We, in fact, make so we have made so many drastic changes in our lives for this virus that has a 99% survival rate. This virus has a 99% survival rate based off the statistics we have. Given those statistics are accurate. And we've made drastic changes over our lives. Schools closed previously. And now there's this huge debate. Open schools, don't open schools. Go all online, go partially online. Give children a choice if they want to come five days or go online. And thing is... We have made so many drastic changes out of fear for this virus. So many drastic changes. For instance, a lot of non-essential businesses closed down. And, you know, in fact, many locally owned, family owned businesses are beginning to question, are we going to be able to continue? And that's something that's very sad. And, you know, that right there, that produces fear right there. And... This whole thing, everything you know the media is putting out, and even our entertainment is putting out about this, is generating fear in people over a virus. And you know the sad thing is, is many Christians, many Christians, professing Christians, are giving themselves knowingly over to a spirit of fear. They've read over the scriptures where it says, we were not given a spirit of fear, but one of love and of power and of sound mind. And... People even give themselves over to idolatry. And one of the things I want to tackle here 
is it has been the stigma has been put around that it is patriotic it is patriotic to follow all the rules all the rules and all the recommendations from the CDC and whoever else it's patriotic to follow all those guidelines to a T it's patriotic and you know it's a good thing it's a good thing to adapt to this new normal what is normal about this you got people being shut up in their homes for months not being able to go about their normal lives restaurants having occupancy limits and there's so much cultural pressure about this so much cultural pressure to adapt to this to adapt to this new normal that we're being pressured on about and a lot of people are just giving into it they're just going with the flow they're just going with the flow with this and not only are Christians and non-Christians being given into a spirit of fear, but also people are giving themselves over to idolatry by thinking, oh, I'm being patriotic by following these guidelines. And, you know, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with, you know, practicing good hygiene. We should be doing that all the time, not just when there's a pandemic, okay? However... There's many forms idolatry can take. You can have idolatry to things such as your car, your house, your spouse, your finances, etc. However, there is a very common form, a very common form of idolatry. And sadly, this one does not get talked about a lot. And what that form of idolatry is, is self-idolatry. Idolatry in yourself, making yourself up to be an idol. And this ties back to what the original sin was in the Bible, which if you go all the way back to the beginning in Genesis, it was to be just like God. And that's what really self-idolatry boils down to, and probably a lot of us not knowingly have given ourselves to that, at least at some point in our lives. Idolatry of self, or self-idolatry, however you want to word it. And that's two things the Lord has shown me. People are giving themselves over to a spirit of fear, and people are giving themselves over to self-idolatry. And even idolatry and this whole stigma of a new normal, people embracing this. There is nothing, nothing normal about this. And also, another thing I want to tackle, because we're going to be dealing with this even more as we go down the road here, given what the experts are saying. And that is the talk of a coming vaccine for this virus. The experts are saying that once we have this vaccine, we will be able to get back to normal. And many people are hype about this vaccine. They're excited about this vaccine. And I'm not fully an anti-vaxxer. Let me just put that out there. However, number one, we have to realize that there is expounding evidence of there being a chip involved with this this vaccine that is coming out. There is expounding evidence on that. The White House even signed a deal with a biomedical, excuse me, a biotech company to develop a microchip. And that should be concerning to us because we've already adapted to you can't go into a store without a mask on it should be plain on the wall that the intention of this vaccine is going to be the same. And I want to tell you something. I feel very strongly in my spirit that it would be very wise for Christians not to get the vaccine. And I'm not saying that because I'm an anti-vaxxer. I'm saying that because of what's behind this virus. I'm not just the microchip. And I'm not saying or implying that this is the mark of the beast. We don't even have an Antichrist that has risen to power yet. But I think it would be very wise of us not to jump on the bandwagon and get this vaccine. And the Lord showed me in a dream that I had just a few days ago that people will be forced into receiving this vaccination for COVID-19. And there will be so much cultural pressure getting, to get people to receive this vaccination. And, you know, people think, oh my, they always want you to get the flu shot and everything. And this is going to be worse than when they try to get people to get the annual flu shot. 
And, you know, simply the dream was just seeing people abruptly grabbed by the arm and being given this vaccine, even, you know, it was a very short dream, people being abruptly grabbed by the arm, given this vaccination. A lot of people were willingly receiving it. And, you know, people surprisingly seem to have more faith in a coming vaccination as, as like a savior from this problem we're going through right now than they actually do Jesus Christ. And that even, that, um, that's applying to Christians. I'm not applying it to unbelievers, but a lot of people have much faith in the scientists right now, rather than having faith in God. And we got to have our faith in God, Christians. And unbelievers that have never heard the gospel before, God can outdo anything medical experts can do. He can outrun them beyond what you can imagine. And here's another part of the problem. People have bowed down to governments, schools, colleges, and even your workplaces on telling you how to be safe, how to make yourself feel safe during all this. And, you know, in fact, I just seen several posts from different universities in my area and community colleges on everything they're doing to make you feel safe when you go back to college. And Christians should realize what scripture already tells us when we go through times like this. We are to walk by faith and not by sight. However, look at the majority of how churches responded to this. Majority of Christians are walking by sight, not by faith. Just look at how the churches responded initially to this. Churches, whenever they were told by their governor and even the White House, when they were told to shut their doors for two weeks or whatever the time frame was in each state, they bowed right down to it. Many did it right instantly. Right instantly. I believe within a day. In a day, in my state at least, I saw so many churches posting about that. Did you really even take time to seek God on what you were supposed to do? And, you know, it may not always be the pastors. I want to just throw this out there. It may not always be the pastors. It might be the board. Because sometimes the board overruns things too much in churches. I've seen that myself through the years of being in the church world. And the church right now, church, there are very few churches that stayed open during the whole thing. Very, very, very few. And there are churches that also, they might have closed for two, three weeks, and then they began to realize, okay, this is, they're realizing what's going on, and they open back up, back to normal, and they took a stand. I applaud churches like that, that either stayed open or quickly, within a few weeks, realized what was going on. But yet, the vast majority of churches in America closed down. Vast majority. There's still churches closed down. Still churches closed down over this. And this really tells us where the churches are. Where the churches are. And we're to simply walk by faith. Walk by faith. You're not walking by faith if you're closing down your churches. I'm just throwing that out there. I know there's going to be people who don't like me for saying that, and so be it. You're not walking by faith by closing down your churches for months. It's time for us to take a stand, Christians. It's time for us to take a stand on this, because these are tyrant government orders. And the spirit of Antichrist is at hand here. The Bible says in... I believe it's in 1 John, I might be wrong, but it says many Antichrists have gone out into the world. There will be a the Antichrist during the end times, but there are many Antichrist demon spirits out there that are working through our leaders. And the Bible does say near the end that more and more wicked people will rise to power. And you know, it's just amazing. It's just amazing how politically correct the church will get. But it's so far, so far from biblically correct. Part of what we are commissioned to do is lay hands on the sick and cast out demons. That's in Mark chapter 16, 
verses 17 and 18. And nowhere, nowhere did Jesus Christ imply that that was limited to first century Christians. Those people would say the power of God ceased at the end of the apostolic church. That's a lie right out of hell. There is nowhere in scripture it says that the power of God ceased working the same way it did in the early church as written in the book of Acts. And I believe I said in my last video, explain to me how there are still miracles being performed in the very last chapter of the book of Acts if it's such a transitional book regarding God's power. And how can most, how can these churches, how can these churches be closed for months at a time? But yet, yeah, and we find in the book of Acts so many times that the apostles were told not to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. Did they stop? Did they stop and obey the government? Did they submit to government authority? No, they didn't because that contradicted what they were commissioned to do. They were commissioned to go out, lay hands on the sick, and they will recover, cast out demons, and make disciples. You can't do that if you're being shut down. The full gospel of Jesus Christ not just includes salvation with repentance of sins. And that's very important. Salvation with true repentance, true turning away and acknowledging you're a sinner. That is very important. However, the full gospel not only includes salvation, but it also includes healing and deliverance. The word saved in the New Testament it's Greek sozoed. That means saved, healed, and delivered. Look it up for yourself in the Greek and see how many times it's in the New Testament. It means saved, healed, and delivered. And you know what? If we're not laying hands on the sick and casting out demons, we are not preaching the full gospel. There's many churches that don't preach in healing and miracles. And yeah, I'm not saying that Healing is always press the button and it's there. Sometimes that's not how it works. And I'll get more into that in another video. But I'm saying the full gospel of Jesus Christ is salvation, healing, and deliverance. That's the full gospel of Jesus Christ. And sadly, many churches are not preaching it. And that reflects by them shutting down for months at a time and still being shut down. Churches must assemble, whether in person, in a physical building, outside, or underground. And there will be a time that will come when there will have to be all home churches in the United States. That day is coming. That day is coming. People say that the government did not shut down us ministering the gospel. And I would actually like to challenge that. So the government may have allowed, excuse me there, I had a clock going off on me for the new hour that it's on, but the government may have permitted churches, oh, you can live stream instead of holding services in your building. And, you know, there is a place for ministering over social media. That absolutely has a place and that is a tool we should use, just like I use that. But it does not replace assembling together in a building or outside or in a home for home churches where that has to take place at. However, the government did not, com did not permit Christians to go into hospitals and to lay hands on the sick. They did not permit us to do that. That's part of the gospel. That's part of the Great Commission. Weren't we commanded to lay hands on the sick? Also, you know, you can't lay hands on the sick over a over a camera. You can't do it. Yeah, you can pray for people over there, but you still people still need to come together and congregate together. It tells us not to forsake the assembling as the day draws near. Look what's going on. The day is drawing near. And excuse me. Laying on hands of people and casting out devils. We got a lot of people right now. A lot of people right now who are dealing with depression and anxiety over this thing. And you know what? I believe most of the time that is a result of demonic oppression or as late as possession. And you know, there are different stages that lead up to demonic possession, but I'll get into it another time on how that all 
ties into demonology, but think about it. Just think about this. The government allows us to do our thing through social media and online, but they did not permit us to assemble together that the sick people might go up to the altar, might go up to the altar and ask for a prayer for whatever sickness they're going through. And that the elders of the church may come up and lay hands on them, anointing them with oil. You can't do that when you shut down churches. Unless you're having a home church or unless your pastors and elders are going around to all the members of the church's homes and seeing if they need prayer. Maybe that's happening in very few cases, but the vast majority of that wasn't happening. So, in terminology, the government, the government of the United States and every other state that went along with this, which is pretty much all 50 states in their own way. I know they all did things differently, but they pretty much told us not to do the majority of what we were commissioned to do by Jesus Christ. And yeah, you know, the church is not a building. I agree with that, but we are still to assemble. We are not to forsake the assembling together as the day draws near. And it is very clear that if people still can go out and get abortions, but yet, church services aren't allowed. Come on, people. <laughs> There's a lot of double talk here with these mandates. There's a lot of double talk here. You don't have to look too far. You don't have to look too far. Are we going to take a stand, Christians, and preach the full gospel as, com as commissioned by Jesus Christ? Or are we going to get all wrapped up in the philosophy of man and bow down to the spirit of fear? Be honest with yourself. And many people still want to boost their egos and be patriotic by conforming to this new normal. There's nothing normal about that. And let me just remind you of this scripture. I often use this scripture a lot, but very important here. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually, spiritual maturity is very important, by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in His plan and purpose for you. Are we going to conform to this new normal? Because that's one of the ways of the world. There's nothing normal about this. Nothing normal about this. And number one, this whole new normal hinders the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ as commissioned. My final thing to my final word to you is churches should not have closed down. Churches should if they're still closed down, they need to open back up and wake up and smell the roses to what's really going on here. Satan is having a field day with this because a lot of churches aren't open and people aren't able to receive prayer. The devil loves it when people don't receive prayer. When people aren't laying on of hands and all that. The devil loves that. He loves it whenever people aren't able to get delivered from demons and all that. The devil just loves that. The devil's having a good old time sitting back and laughing at all the churches right now that are still closed. And when they closed for several months at a time, he was laughing at you. And yet, you know, I'm also going to throw this out there. Many hypocrite churches out there, too, that close down that say that they will not allow a doctrine to permit sickness on people. But yet, mega churches like that, that say that they operate in some power, Still closed down. They canceled their healing services. You don't have to look too far to find those names. There's a lot of big names out there. And one of the things I want to point out is, while I certainly believe in the power of God, just as much as the Holy Spirit is still moving in churches today that still stayed open and still took a stand on what was going on, there is a counterfeit Holy Spirit. There is a counterfeit Holy Spirit, and it has made its way into many churches, especially the big ones. And, you know, I believe that God is exposing 
all of this during this time. And things have been shaken, and a lot of people have said that. Things have been shaken, and everything that has not gone in the church should be shaken out. I sure hope it is, because there's a lot of things that need cleaned up in the churches in America today. And I'm not just saying one denomination, I'm saying all of them, every single one. We're nowhere near perfection, church. And we got to take a stand, Christians. I'm not trying to be condemning with this video. I'm not trying to, you know, dismiss this virus that we're dealing with here. But really, look at the overall situation of this world right now. Please, please, just look at this overall situation that's going on right now in this world. And, you know, some people think that this is all going to be over right after the election. And as much as I would love for that to be true, I have a hard time accepting that it's going to be over by the election. I still feel we're going to be dealing with this for a good while. And, you know, I wish, you know, just right after the election and everything's done that it will all go away. But I do not foresee that happening. I cannot foresee that. I think this is going to be something we're going to be dealing with for a while here. And we're really going to have to take a walk by faith here, Christians. And, you know, the Bible tells us that there will come times when we will have to walk by faith. We will have to walk by faith. And this is a time, this is clearly a time for every single Christian to walk by faith. Every single Christian, regardless of what denomination you are, walk by faith. Walk by faith during this whole thing that's going on right now. And... We gotta stand strong, Christians. We have to stand strong. So many people have already given themselves way into the fear of all of this that's been produced by the media. You know, best thing to do is unplug from all that and plug into the Word of God. Spend time in the Word of God because that is your spiritual food. Excuse me. And, you know, this video, not necessarily for condemnation, but it's a wake up call. It is a wake-up call for all of us, even myself included. We need to wake up to what's really going on at hand. And, you know, just think about all the changes that have been made. And, you know, a lot of things gradually took place. But this situation is so perfect. So perfect for someone to rise to power to be the Antichrist. And, you know, I know there's a few other things that have to take place before we enter into the, the tribulation period. But... Things are getting more and more perfect for an Antichrist to come in on the stage. And, you know, I believe, you know, the church that is here right now, we got to take a stand because there's a lot of people that are lost, a lot of lost people out there. And we got to walk by faith. We got to lead by example for these people. Because the end is drawing near. It is The writing's on the wall. The writing's on the wall. The end is drawing near. And Jesus Christ will return one day. And, you know, I don't care what theory you believe in with the tribulation period, pre-trib, post-trib, all that stuff. Bottom line is, is Jesus Christ is returning. Whether you like it or not, Jesus Christ is returning. And now is a time for us to walk by faith, not by sight. And reach the lost. And I encourage you, make sure you are founded upon the rock. Get on a solid foundation foundation of a Christian is so, so important. So important. Because when tribulation comes, if you don't have that solid foundation in faith, you're going to fall apart. we got to be found upon the rock that is Jesus Christ. So that is all I have for this teaching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was an encouragement and, you know, something that stirred you up to take a stand in faith and to walk by faith. Because that's what I want to see. I don't want to see people upset because I called things out. I want to see people stirred up spiritually to take a stand and to walk by faith as we are commanded to in God's word. That's the purpose of this video. Not to, you know, you know, necessarily completely call people out. But walk by faith, people. I hope this stirred you up to walk by faith. And continue walking by faith if you already have been walking by faith. So thank you for watching this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you get notified. And, you know, let me just briefly pray. And that will be the end of this video. So, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time to share your word. 
so that people are watching, Lord, and I just pray that anything going on in their life, Lord, whatever needs they have, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you will meet their needs according to your sovereign will, Lord. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you stir these people up to take a stand boldly according to what Scripture says and to walk by faith. To walk by faith, not by sight during these trying times we're going through, Lord. And I thank you that, you know, you're going to call and rise up many people to take a stand, Lord. And many people have callings on their lives for the five-fold ministry. They're going to come out of this, Lord, for what I believe to be a final revival, Lord. And I just thank you for what you're going to do through everyone that's going to walk by faith right now, Lord. Because now is the time for us to do that, Lord. And give us the strength, Lord. Give us the boldness, biblical boldness. Don't give us a prideful ego. Give us biblical boldness. And also let us walk humbly too, Lord. Let us not forget to walk humbly in all the fruits of the Spirit. And I thank you for it. And anyone that's dealing with sickness, Lord, any sickness, it must bow the knee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I thank you, Lord, for healing that is provided in the atonement of Jesus Christ. And anyone that's dealing with depression or anxiety, Lord, I just speak deliverance over them in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that is dealing with depression or anxiety right now, I break the power of anxiety and depression in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anxiety and depression must flee in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. Anyone that is watching us that is in anxiety and depression, I declare in the name of Jesus that it has fleed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it. And in your mighty name I pray, amen. So once again, thank you for watching this video. God bless you and have a great week. Remember, we walk by faith, not by sight.